economic development. So we should develop the natural resources in such a way that there will be all around economic development of the nation. So, but development often comes with a price and this price is nothing but a damage to the environment. So as I told earlier, in the process of extracting of metals, coal, nickel, iron ore from the earth, we are damaging the earth's surface as well as when we extract these metals, we get a some amount of slag, some amount of waste impurities in the form of slag, then we throw these impurities around. So in that way we are damaging the environment. So that is how it means that is what it means. The development comes with a price. That price is nothing but the environmental damage. So this sustainable development means following certain practices which help in saving our environment from damage. So all these things are damaging the environment, but sustainable development helps us to prevent this environment from damage. The principles of sustainable development helps us to preventing the environment from damage. So this is necessary for maintaining the earth in good shape. So sustainable management of resources is necessary so that earth will be always maintained in a good shape. And then the future generations can also enjoy the bounty and the beautiful things of the nature. So that is how sustainable development is necessary. So what principles does sustainable development practice in saving the environment? It is three R's principle that is reduce, recycle and reuse. With these three principles sustainable development is preventing damage to the environment. The first one is reduce. So what can we do? We should reduce the consumption of various natural resources whenever possible. Decrease in consumption of these resources whenever possible. Example, switch off the electrical appliances when not required. So suppose if we are going out of the home for any function or any purpose, or even if we are going out of the room for the washroom or to eat food, we should immediately switch off the lights and fans of that room. Thereby we will prevent electricity, right? We will save electricity. Whenever we are going out of the house or out of the rooms, we should switch off the lights and switches. That way we will prevent electricity, save electricity, not prevent electricity, save electricity. Don't waste food. Again, food is sourced from natural resources like plants. Plants only give us vegetables, plants only give us grains, wheat, rice, etc. So, we shouldn't waste food. Then, repair the leaking taps. So, if any tap is getting leaked in your homes, you should immediately get that repaired so that you can save water. So that is how it is reduced. Next is recycle. It is an another way to reduce the demand of natural resource. How can you recycle? There are many things which can be recycled again and again. That means repeatedly we can change their form and use again. That is recycle. So example is paper recycling. You always hear recycled paper. It will be written in your notebooks that this book is made of recycled paper. So by recycling paper, what do we do? We decrease the demand of wood and thereby the requirement of cutting down the trees is also decreased. Paper is sourced from trees. Wood is cut and with the help of machines, paper is made. But if you use a recycled paper, the demand for wood will decrease and thereby helping in saving the plants and the trees. So that is how it is recycled. Then it is next is reuse. So, but this process of recycling requires some energy. That means making with the help of machines only we make paper, right? So, running of the machines requires some type of energy. So, process of recycling uses some amount of energy. But the process of reuse doesn't require any energy. Reuse is better than recycle because it doesn't use any energy. Many times things can be reused. So how can things be reused many times? Let's see some examples. Old plastic bottles can be used for storing items in kitchen. Suppose if we buy jam or if we buy any food eatable item. Like suppose if we buy jam or honey in glass bottles or plastic bottles. After consumption of honey, jam or pickles, we can wash the bottles and again use it in the kitchen. Reuse. Next is forest and wildlife. So forests are regarded as biodiversity hotspots. 
What do we understand by biodiversity? Biodiversity means a species of plants and animals or a variety of plants and animals living together in a forest. So forests are biodiversity hotspots. So there is a lot of variety of plants as well as animals living in the forests. So conservation, so conservation of forest and wildlife is necessary protect the biodiversity, to protect the various plants and animals living there because forest is a house for them, right? The forest is a home for those plants and animals. So it is very much necessary to conserve the forests. This is important because loss of biodiversity leads to ecological imbalance. If there are no forests, forests are getting rapidly cut and there is deforestation. Then what happens? There will be no home for the animals, birds living there. Insects. Then what happens due to loss of home, the, the animal species, insect species may die and then there will be an ecological imbalance. So that is the need for conservation of forests because there will be loss of biodiversity. Some organisms may die if there are no forests to live. But any conservation effort for forest and wildlife must keep the interest of stakeholders in mind. Stakeholders means people who depend on forest for their purposes. So conservation efforts of forest and wildlife must be done by keeping in mind the interest of stakeholders. Stakeholders means people who invest their money in the forest, people who depend on depend for their livelihood on forest. Those are known as the stakeholders. So what are the what who are these stakeholders and what are their things who are these stakeholders and for what things they depend on forests let's see stakeholders are people living in or around the forests as they depend on various forest producers for their livelihood people who live inside the forest or around the forest and depend on forest for their livelihood for their food money etc then forest department officials who are the owners of the forest these are also stakeholders then various industrialists who depend on forest for their raw materials. BDs, which people smoke, those are tobacco type leaves, right? So BD Industries uses kendu leaves as raw material and these leaves are sourced from the forests. Then wood is used as the raw material in many industries. So industries are also dependent on forests. So wildlife and nature enthusiasts who want to conserve nature these people are also stakeholders, wildlife and nat natural life enthusiasts who aim to conserve the nature. All these people are stakeholders of the forest and for what things they depend, local people need firewood, timber wood and thatch. Thatch is used for making huts, right? Thatch roof we will have and firewood for burning for cooking purpose, timber wood for furniture purpose. So local people depend on forest for these purposes. Then bamboo. Bamboo for the forest from the forest is used to be used for making slats for the husks and baskets which are used for storing any items. So that is again bamboo is used sourced from the forest. Then wood is used to make agriculture, fishing and hunting materials. So implements used in agriculture, fishing and hunting are sourced from wood and wood is sourced from forest. Next by beginning of the colonial rule in India. Before beginning of the colonial rule, that is British rule in India, forest dwellers, that means people who used to live on forest and depend for their livelihood on forest, were free to utilize resources from the forest as they wished. So people who lived in and around the forest before the British rule were free to utilize anything from the forest. But things changed when British took a control of forests in India. So after British were ruling India, all the things were changed. Then what happened? They restricted the access of forest dwellers to the only forest resources. Not all resources were easily accessed after the British rule came in India. This created a huge problem for many people who had been traditionally dependent on forest for their survival. Definitely, when somebody is ruling, it will be very difficult for their survival. They will not get access to all those things which they used to get earlier. So after then, after a few years came independence in India. Then after independence came, there was separate forest department. 
So after independence in India, the forest department took over. But interest of the forest dweller continued to be ignored for a long time. Even though the forest department had forest officials, they didn't much bother about these forest dwellers, their interests, what they need. They ignored the forest dwellers for a long time. Forest was cut to obtain timber for railways for various construction activities. And then forest officials allowed the wood to be cut for the purpose of railway purpose, for timber wood, for wood purpose. This cleared forest was replaced by planting eucalyptus trees which led to the problem of monoculture. Then what was happening? For the purpose of wood, usually teak would be cut, then babool tree, neem trees, mango trees, all these trees will be cut for the purpose of wood and then the forest will be cleared after cutting those trees. There will be an empty space left there. Then what happens? This empty space left was later planted by eucalyptus trees. So the cleared forest was replaced by planting eucalyptus trees which led to the problem of monoculture. Then what happened? Only the forest was filled with eucalyptus trees. No other trees were there. Mono means single. Monoculture is here. Mono means single. And culture is nothing but the planting of trees and development, developing them. So only single species of eucalyptus plant was filled in the entire forest. Growing a simple species, growing a single species is called monoculture. As I told you, mono means single, and growing culture is nothing but growing. So only eucalyptus species was grown completely in the forest. It disturbed the biodiversity of the area. So how did this disturb the biodiversity of the area? Biodiversity is the variety of plants and animals living in that area. But these plants, insects, so animals means insects, wild animals, birds, everything. These live on the trees by making nests or by digging burrows or holes. But they specifically live on few varieties of trees. All of them cannot live on eucalyptus trees, right? Eucalyptus is a medicinal plant herb. It has a lot of oil smell in it. So all the animals will not be able to bear that and they will not be able to build their nests on their trees. So what happened? It disturbed the biodiversity. Not all animals, insects and birds could depend for their life on those eucalyptus trees. So thereby some of them died. So that is how the biodiversity of that area was affected. Then local people and forest conservation. Then what they did? Because there was only monoculture spread. Then some people tried to conserve the forest. There were some movements happened. So let's see what was that. So there are many examples which suggest that involvement of local communities is necessary for conservation effort. Then what happened? Local people came in and they developed some type of movements, some type of communities and then they fought for this forest with the officials. That one example is Bishnoi community of Rajasthan. This Bishnoi community of Rajasthan, the women of this community used to hug trees and didn't allow people to cut those trees. So that is how Vishnoi community had. There was a village called Khelvi in Rajasthan. In that village, many hundreds of trees were hugged by these ladies of this community and thereby they prevented cutting of wood from those forests.